I'm here today at the headquarters of Met Helmet in the heart of the Italian Alps to meet cycling's biggest star, Tade Pogaccia, one of the youngest winners of some of cycling's oldest races. Today we go beyond the usual post-race interviews to hopefully show you a side of Tade that you haven't seen before. Tell me your first memory of two wheels. Uh, okay, first memory of two wheels uh, was when I uh, started learning the bike, going to, to school and uh, to football matches with it. And then, uh, yeah, when I started road cycling, really on the on the road bike, uh, it was uh, 2008. Uh, in 2007, my, the coach uh, came to our parents because they knew each other, and he is all. He was. Uh, he still uh, recruiting the riders for the for the club. Uh, yeah, he wanted my brother because he was older, two years of me, and uh, then yeah, but I had to do everything that uh, my brother did. Like always, you know, follow the, the big brother. And uh, yeah, half a uh, year later, I also started because uh, I grew a little, so I fitted the road bike. And yeah, it was uh, amazing right away. So was it, your, was it that sense of um, freedom that you can get from a bike and you can go and explore wherever you like? Was that one of the things that, which drew you to it? Yeah, I think so. And uh, yeah, the first thing was uh, when I started was new friends, uh, new people around me. Uh, we got we got really great along uh, and uh, the nature riding every day on the on the fresh air uh, sometimes also in the rain it was just something different you know special and uh, I don't know uh, feel of the freedom. So when it comes to inspiration for your um, cycling, did it start with uh, your family or was it some other particular rider who inspired you to get on a bike? Uh, not so much uh, that I was inspired by by some people, but uh, I think I was inspired by by that that I could ride and improve myself and uh, to go faster every time. So I didn't have any idols or heroes uh, when I was young. Uh, I was never that kind of that kind of kid. Did you ever have an idol at, at a point when you were growing up? Or? No, I think no. Real, real an idol? I think not. But um, I had people, friends around me who I uh, look up to. Um, I mean, to be like uh, the way they are, nice people, and uh, yeah. But never really had an idol. So yeah. Right. So rewind back. We are September 2020 start of the rescheduled tour you're arriving in nice like what are your feelings yeah uh, it was amazing um also i was coming from monaco to to the start of a uh, tour that was you know something crazy it's 30 minutes ride drive and uh yeah um i knew the roads it was uh, i knew the city so it was uh, feeling like home, and um, so I think it was more easy uh, on the start for me. Uh, it was just a really, really nice uh, feeling to, to be on the start. Were you nervous at all? Or? Yeah, a little bit, but not, not too much. Yeah. I was not even thinking about winning it, because that felt like it's almost impossible. But yeah, I was really just happy to to be racing and to be developing and to have opportunity to go in a world tour and uh, it all comes along and the victories and the, the being uh, better every year. So yeah, then it just happened. Did you have any idea that you could even compete for the, for the win at the time? No, I mean, I knew that I was good, that I can be um, really good in GC, but in our meeting before the tour was like going for top five and then uh, through the stages we went for the top three and then uh, in the end yeah, we could see that we can go for the yellow. Um, I never imagined that I would be on podium or any close to, to winning to the tour. Even if couldn't go for the GC, if something would happen then 
yeah, we would try to improvise and go for the stages, but uh, yeah, the plan, we were always focused on the, on the GC. So that first tour stage win that you had, stage nine, how did it feel? I mean, it was similar to, to Liege two weeks ago. Grabbing the just, helmet. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, you know, in this belief that it really happened, you know, racing on uh, instinct, yeah, riding bike and just go full gas. It was uh, one of uh, the best uh, stages I won. So how did it compare to your other wins that you'd had in life, for example, at like Tour California or the World Tour? Yeah, in Tour of California, I was, uh, when I won the stage, the Queen stage, that was also uh, amazing. Always when you out-sprint somebody, it feels much better than going solo for 40 k's and then just arrive uh, and win. I mean, it feels big, you know, but it does it doesn't give you the excitement than when you out sprint somebody and just you can throw your hands up and just scream out that you're really happy. But yeah, all the all the wins I will keep in my memory. So what is like the most challenging part for you, like in a grand tour? Like what's the hardest thing for you to do? If you lose time, then uh, that's the hardest time when uh, nothing you can do after the race, you know. You just do like every day the same and you hope to be good next day. That's the, the biggest problem for me. I mean, I'm the hardest one, I think. Is it almost like having 21 individual races throughout a Grand Tour where you have to kind of not think too far ahead? Yeah, that's true. That's also, yeah. Uh, some people are already thinking about the, the three stages ahead, but I also know all the stages, but uh, yeah, I just think about the next day. Uh, okay, if it's flat uh, race, then uh, then I think about four days ahead if this first mountain stage, you know, but uh, more or less just day by day. What was the most challenging moment on that tour? I think uh, for the team was kind of bad when uh, De La Cruz crashed the first day and uh, so he was in pain. Uh, it's not nice to see your, uh, your friend, your uh, teammate in that much of pain every day. And then yeah, losing time on the windy stage, that was a hard moment. I mean, but we kind of beat ourselves really well and uh, we lift up the, the atmosphere super fast uh, that day. Yeah, when Fabio went home, that was also a uh, kind of a bad moment. And uh, one moment that was really shit was when uh, Formula broke his collarbone and uh, had to go home. That was uh, a yeah, bad day. And, like how important are your teammates and your staff for uh, picking up the atmosphere of the team again? Everybody has a role to play. Yeah, you go from nutritionist and chef to, to mechanics and masseurs to sport directors. This is the part of the team that is super important because uh, without them, we, the riders would be lost. We wouldn't even find the start. So that's one thing that uh, it's kind of important. And, uh, the organization is quite big in, in cycling, so it's a really big work uh, for all of them. And then in the race, yeah, you have uh, six, seven teammates with you. And uh, yeah, it, it's so important. If you're alone against uh, seven riders all week or all three weeks, then then you cannot win. For sure, if, if, even if you're the best rider in the world, if you're alone, you cannot win. Because then for the wind to keep the position, uh, there's so many things that uh, yeah, the riders do for you. Uh, it's just uh, it's crazy to think about that it's individual sport. <laughs> right, so last time trial in the Tour, you're just under a minute down on Roglic. How did it feel being on that start line? Honestly, it felt uh, amazing. I had a uh, good tour, I was second, I had a uh, white jersey, um, the time trial suited for me, I went for the stage win, for a third stage win, uh, it felt so good, um, zero pressure, yeah, I just did my thing, I was relaxed and uh, go on the course knowing that uh, I can do a good time, I can, you know, maybe win the stage. Even if I don't, 
I'm second in, in the tour. It was just, uh, you know, uh, it was already the success, I success, guess. you know, the, the big success that uh, I would never forget, even if I would be second. Do you think that lack of pressure, like we we're talking before, do you think that was the difference between maybe his performance and yours? I'm not sure. I will never know what was the reason, you know, uh, I was in my head free. Um, in the last stage, really zero pressure, and I think he was under pressure because he had the yellow jersey for a long time, and the team worked so hard for him. And uh, yeah, I think uh, when he started losing some time, you know, in the head, the game started to play. I think uh, that's my um, my thoughts. And yeah, when uh, your head is all over the place, then also the legs are kind of lost. And uh, yeah, I think that was yeah also the reason. Yeah. Do you find it hard, like competing with a fellow countryman, another Slovenian? Was it a hard challenge to have that uh, rivalry between the two of you in the race? Yeah, I was, I was uh, really shocked and uh, emotional after the the, the TT. Uh, actually, yeah, I I didn't expect it. You know, I like everybody else expect Primoz to to win. You know, mixed. Mixed feelings, you know, it's, uh, I was always cheering for him, you know, all those years, uh, looking him on the TV when, uh, yeah, when he was winning, it was crazy and, uh, yeah, he put uh, Slovenia cycling really high. Yeah, I think I was not that happy that, like, I should, you know, when, uh, I mean, that's amazing to think, like, you've yeah. literally just won the tour, yeah, yeah I know. you have this conflicting feeling inside, having seen somebody that you've maybe like admired growing up and then yeah. you've taken that tour away in a way. Yeah. So do you think sporting rivals can also be friends in racing? Yeah, um, of course. Um, in cycling, I think there are a lot of friends in the race. You race each other, you respect each other, but uh, of course you want to win and you race for maybe for another team and yeah, it's your job. And then after the race, yeah, you you congratulate each other, you you hug each other, and uh, yeah, even go for a, for a drink. Yeah, just talk about different stuff because yeah, cycling is not uh, everything, you know. And uh, yeah, we you need friends also, you know, um, on the job. And I think it's more nice, you know, it's more human you know to have that much of respect to your rivals is just yeah something that uh, people can can learn from you know and uh, i think is yeah really important to 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 have these kind of uh, uh relationships between the riders so on tv then you seem to almost race honestly with absolutely zero fear like with such confidence is that something that you've have you always done that you have nothing to lose if you try. I mean, yeah, you can lose the, the spots in the race, but that, for me, it doesn't matter so much. If you don't try, you don't know. And Do you ever use a power meter in races or not so much? Before last year, uh, I never even had the, the display, you know, uh, the power on the, on the display. But yeah, I think now um, I start to finally look sometimes but uh, not so much. I just uh, I know my legs and uh, my heart. If uh, yeah, I have good day, I don't need to look on the computer. Training is one thing, and racing is another. And uh, people think that uh, yeah, if I go on training 400 watts, then on the race I need to go also 400 watts. Otherwise, I will explode. But for me, the adrenaline is working on uh, in, in the race, and sometimes you can go harder, sometimes you you can go less, uh, like 20 watts less. But that doesn't mean uh, that you you are shit. You just if you start looking and you see, oh, today I'm going 20 watts less, then for sure uh, you you will get dropped at some point because yeah, in your mind you're already telling yourself that you, you're not good and yeah, if, but if you don't look, you don't know and it doesn't hurt, you know. So tell me then, with Liège, did Liège play out exactly how you thought it played out in your head early on? No, I, I think no, I 
I was uh, imagining totally different. I mean, before Liège, I never thought about the finish itself. I, I was thinking about the more about the, the last climb, the last and the, the third last climb, La Redoute. I was yeah, imagining these these two climbs, uh, going for gas and uh, just to the race to explode, and then. On the race, yeah, the race exploded there, like uh, similar, like I imagined. Um, I was even better than in my <laughs> in my thoughts, you know. So it was uh, it was kind of cool, yeah. But I never I never thought about finish itself because yeah, you you never know. So did you expect it to be Ineos being the team to attack on Aradut? No, that was that was a big surprise for me, but. It was good for me. That made the race hard, and I I had really good day. I was eating so well, so um, yeah, uh, that was uh, perfect for me. Uh, I didn't think too much in the last few kilometers. It was just uh, the riding my bike uh, and trying to win. I don't know the the instinct of racing. It was like it was not something that was planned or tactics or I just yeah I was just there doing doing what I do and in the end was uh, the right uh, going you know yeah <laughs> I think for sure for people like I mean, you and uh, Van Aert and Van Der Poel you kind of have this uh, new way of racing which hasn't been used in a long time you know like you know, this this racing on just pure instinct and energy rather than power meters. Yeah, I think so. Uh, now we see more of this. I think uh, racing on your feel, whatever you feel in the moment, you just do. You don't think about it twice or <laughs> three times. You just just do it. Yeah, and I think it's it's beautiful. Within Liège, what do you think was the key moment for you that that helped you set up the victory? I think it's. It started with the day before with a big dinner, <laughs> then big uh, big breakfast in the morning, uh, good night's sleep. That was uh, that was the key, I think. So, if there's one like uh, overall tip you could give to every cyclist in the world, rest would be. Yeah, yeah for sure, train hard, but rest harder. <laughs> <laughs> As you become more and more successful in cycling, how do you balance that? pressure and maintaining that enjoyment in cycling? Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, every year I was better since I was a um, small kid and I could see that um, other people also see that, uh, that were close to me and uh, but nobody really put any pressure on me. We did uh, normal trainings, uh, racing like for fun in uh, in the younger categories and uh, the juniors. Uh, the second year, I start to be really good and uh, start to winning uh, good races. And uh, but yeah, people around me were just just happy, you know, uh, to have uh, results, but. Nobody ever put really big pressure on me and uh, I never put pressure on myself. So even if somebody put pressure on you, then uh, you just need to like, okay, whatever. And uh, just do your best thing because if you do your best thing, you you cannot uh, feel bad about it. But if you put then pressure on yourself, then you cannot do 100% uh, what you do. Tour is really important. There is a lot of nervous people around me, but I know this like two months before, then I prepare really good and uh, focus on that. And I visualize my uh, my things and uh, yeah, prepare good for the race because it's important. But if you are calm and you just do step by step, then when you start racing, then it's just another bike race because you're prepared good and yeah, there's nothing you should be worried about, then you just do your thing, yeah. So what was your biggest cycling dream growing up? To be on the on the world tour level, to be on the, the start of the tour. And yeah, I think <laughs> that, that uh, dreams uh, just, just pass by. And uh, yeah, now I'm living the dream even, even more than a dream. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. So there you have it, Tade Pogacar. 
Now I'm off to quiz him a bit further about how he prepares for racing to get some riding tips on how to improve your climbing and descending. Wish me luck. <laughs>